Hey y'all, Irick Sky here. Welcome back to another episode of Epic Drone Show. You go to epicdroneshow.com to find the various things I'm going to talk about within this episode. But just wanted to provide an update for everyone. It's, it's getting into the 2016 calendar year. And a lot of things have uh, a lot of things have happened with drones. Now, one of the things is I know a lot of us, including myself, were excited about the Lily camera. Even though it doesn't do 4K video, it on paper seemed to have waterproof properties, etc. But what in the world happened to Lily camera? It still hasn't hit the market. And my fear there is that by the time it does, that it there will likely be a competitor that's waterproof and there will likely be a competitor that has uh, 4K instead of topping out at 1080p video like the Lily camera does. So that's that's been a big that's been a big disappointment for me in 2016 because I was hoping to see the Lily camera and it hasn't you know it hasn't hit the market. Uh, also obviously in 2016 we've had what I've got here which without a doubt is my favorite drone today. Now Again, with me saying that, if you're already a Phantom 3 professional owner, it would be hard for me to suggest that people upgrade to the Phantom 4. Now, there's some people that have upgraded from Phantom 3 professional to Phantom 4, and they felt that it was a justifiable upgrade. You know, I will tell you that the, from a structural perspective, the Phantom 4 shell, when you hold it in your hand, versus a Phantom 3 professional, it's just a lot more solid. Uh, on the Phantom 4, you're getting... Uh, you're getting obstacle avoidance, which is something that's not present on the Phantom 3 Professional. And although it works, again, I would never trust obstacle avoidance. It's one of those things that, in my opinion, it's there, and it, it, it may better prevent the uh, Phantom 4 from crashing, but I would never trust that it actually works. And you can check out my various videos where I've tested in the field, and, and it worked quite well for me. It even... Uh, when I had a truck out there in the field with glass windows, it was even able to see the glass windows. And that really surprised me because I was afraid, you know, like when a bird's flying and it sees a glass window, it typically doesn't. It crashes into the window at a high rate of speed. So, yeah, that, that was interesting. The improved on the uh, Phantom 4, the way that the propellers attach, it just greatly improved in my opinion. You can see here it's just a gentle push down. And twist and you can feel it pop up it's got a very nice tactile feel to it so I know that it's attached uh, that was something that was one of the gripes with the previous Phantom models is that a lot of people were unsure as to how they should tighten their props you know they were self tightening props but they were often uncertain as to how it uh, how they should be mounted and with the Phantom 4 the new a prop the new prop attach and detach design is is greatly improved in my opinion the camera on the phantom 4 from my experience like if if there's any visual difference at 4k 30 frames per second the uh the visual quality is is negligible and I'm, and again i'm comparing that to the phantom 3 professional uh, the 4k 30 frames per second on the phantom 3 professional is awesome the 4k 30 on the phantom 4 right here is awesome now the gimbal it's more internalized, and I have noticed from my flight so far, and granted, I haven't flown the Phantom 4 as many times yet as I have my Phantom 3 Professional, but from the flights that I have flown, it seems that the video is slightly more stable than the Phantom 3 Professional video. And again, I say that slightly because it's, it's such a minor visual difference, in my opinion, that it would, again, it would be hard for me to tell someone that that they should consider upgrading from Phantom 3 Pro to Phantom 4. But with that said, if you don't have a drone today, in my opinion, the Phantom 4 is the best. It's the latest, uh, the latest design from a proven aerial platform, in my opinion. I love the Phantom, the DJI Phantom design. It's not too big, but it's it's heavy. It's weighted enough to where it can withstand a mild amount of wind. You know, you don't want a drone that's super light that just flops around if there's a, even a small gust of wind. So from that perspective with this, in my opinion, you get something that handles well, but it's, uh, it's still manageable from a travel perspective. It's not too heavy. It's not too big. You know, when you're dealing with a drone like the Inspire, it's too big, it's too heavy, in my opinion. But this is something that 
it's, it's just a, it's a manageable size in my opinion. And what I really like are the quick disconnect prop guards. Just to demonstrate here, and you can check out my other video. Check the link within this video's description. You can find all my videos. Go to 400orbelow.com or just type in epicdroneshow.com and you can get to the same site. So these are neat. My only minor gripe so far, as you can see here, I'm kind of fumbling with taking that quick disconnect thing off. Kind of got to squeeze it and then let it out. But these just go right on. I mean, it slides in. It's on top right there. And then you gently push that, and it locks into place. It's that easy to attach a quick disconnect prop guard to the Phantom 4. So it's, it's one of those deals where if you've watched my previous videos, and see, I'm going to take it off right now. That just pops out and this lifts up. Well, it should lift up. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. So that came out. Um, yeah, my previous Phantom 3 Professional, Phantom 2, and Phantom 2 Vision Plus, I used quick disconnect prop guards, but they weren't like these. These are, these are very lightweight. They're a lot lighter than the ones I used for that. But even though they're lightweight, they seem as if this topples over during landing, and I'll have plenty of times to test it. If it topples over during landing, it'll probably better prevent a propeller from becoming damaged and or broken. And that's important for me because a lot of the times people are like, hey man, you know, you've flown hundreds of flights. Why do you still use prop guards? And that's a valid question. And the reason I do is that I'm often landing on a surface that's rocking, a boat. You know, it's anchored up and, and the boat's rocking. So when this lands, you know, even though I land it perfectly well, when it lands... Because the boat's rocking, there's a good possibility that it may topple over gently after landing. And by having these quick disconnect prop guards in there, it better prevents the possibility of damaging and or breaking a prop. Not to mention, it better protects the interior of my boat. So from that perspective, it's, it's something I always try, you know, I'm flying with if I'm, if I'm landing in a... Uh, challenging environment and the little camera and gimbal guard that came with the phantom 4 top notch look at that that was a pain point with the phantom 3 professional a lot of people were confused by how to get that thing on and off that was it that was me popping it off and to pop it back on just goes on like that and, and also worth mentioning is that you know when i got my phantom 4 this was attached and probably when you ordered a phantom 3 if you had a Phantom 3 Pro in the past, when it arrived, you may have discovered that your camera gimbal guard thing had fallen off during transport. This one did not. So it's a greatly improved design there. And then other things, I mean, this still uses light bridge. It, uh, the batteries, the batteries are, uh, they, they last longer. And I can easily get real world flights easily over 25 minutes, which I think they may claim 28 minutes. But this battery life is without a doubt superior to the Phantom 3 Professional battery life. So that's a huge, uh, a huge upgrade in my opinion. And it came with this, again, what I refer to as the glorified steak cooler. If you've ever ordered mail order steak, it may have arrived in something that looks similar to this. Even though it's kind of silly, it is nice that out of the box that it was in this, and it's, it's functional. I mean, it's not ruggedized. It's not waterproof. But for a small form factor way to, you know, to put, your, to put your drone up when it's not in use or to carry it, this works well. And it came with a Phantom 4. So I thought that was pretty neat. Now, granted, uh, when I'm traveling, I'm often swimming with my drone and uh, going through rough environments. So I want to have a ruggedized and, and waterproof case. But when I'm, when I'm just in a, in a sane environment this works really well. So yeah, the Phantom 4 has really, uh, has really impressed me and it's, you know, the controller, you, you, you know, another subtle thing you may notice if you've used the Phantom 3 Pro, this mount on the Phantom 4 controller is a lot more rugged. It doesn't wobble, it doesn't, uh, I kind of had a rattle in my Phantom 3 Pro one. Not that it was a problem, but this is just a, a I wouldn't say drastically redesigned controller, but it's, it's something where they identified the points of failure with the previous controller and they made it better. So, I mean, that's, that's a positive. 
and supposedly the range, and obviously I fly line of sight to be safe and responsible, but the range of this may be greater than the Phantom 3 Pro. And I haven't tested that. I'm going to test it out over open ocean where it's safe and see what kind of range I can get with the Phantom 4. And at the time of posting this video, I've not tested that. But it's, uh, yeah, so Phantom 4 in 2016 is my favorite drone. I don't want to... Don't want everyone to think, oh, he's just a DJI fanboy. Because as I've mentioned multiple times, I hate the Inspire. It's too big. It's too heavy. It's not for me. But I absolutely adore the DJI Phantom series. With that said, there's a new drone, and you may be familiar with it. You may have seen some of my videos where I said the Typhoon H. And I was saying H just because it sounds cool. And uh, I was practicing an accent, a British accent, for an upcoming short film. But the Typhoon H is, uh, is something that looks really good on paper. It's, it's got the, uh, what seems to be the manageable travel size and the manageable travel weight like you get with the Phantom 4 or the Phantom 3 Pro. But with the Typhoon H, it's got the ability for the landing gear to pop up like an Inspire. You know, when it's, in, when it's flying, that landing gear can go up so it'll better prevent the camera from capturing the props and or the landing gear in its field of view. So there's an advantage there. Now obviously with anything like that, when you've got another component that moves, you've got the possibility of something else that may become broken. But I mean, not that that would be a big concern. With the Typhoon H, and again, I'm saying this on paper because it hasn't, hasn't even hit the market yet to my knowledge at the time of posting this. But on paper, it... Uh, one thing that it doesn't have, it doesn't have a technology as nice as Lightbridge, like your Phantom 3 Pro or your Phantom 4 uses. So, you know, be aware of that, although it comes with its own controller, which is nice, because then you're not having to deal, you know, in my case, I prefer to, to fly with the, uh, with the iPod Touch that I have right here. Again, check the link within this video's description. You can find links to all of the drones and all the accessories that I'm mentioning, but, but, uh, yeah, I like how the, on paper, the unique Typhoon H has got the, uh, you know, the controller that, that has the FPV screen on it. So that's kind of nice. But again, I dislike that it doesn't have the technology as good as Lightbridge. Not that, not that I'm flying long range, but something that is able to, like the Phantom 4 or the Phantom 3 Pro controller, that's able to transmit that quality first-person view signal at a longer range means likely at shorter range it's likely going to be a more reliable signal. So, you know, something to, confi something to consider with the Typhoon H and then also the battery life. Check out the battery life. You know, is it, uh, is it as good as the Phantom 4? And on paper it doesn't seem that it, that it will be. So, I mean, that's not that those are deal breakers because I think, you know, it's, it's a situation where DJI deserves its first true competition and unfortunately, there's been a few drones that have that have hit the market that were, you know, the companies were highly ambitious, uh, such as the uh, Parrot Bebop, and then also the 3DR Solo. But if you've if you've had any experience with those drones, I mean, you, and then you experience a Phantom 3 Pro or a Phantom 4, it would be tough for one to say that they're better drones. And I hate that because there needs to be there needs to be more competition. So in my opinion. On paper, it looks like the Typhoon H may possibly be one of DJI's first true competitors. But we'll see what happens. You know, I canceled my pre-order of it because some fans, they brought to my attention, like, hey, man, check out this stuff. And I was like, oh, you know, people like to bash everything. So, you know, with, without a doubt, I did a, I did a Google search. But sure enough, there was, there was information from multiple sources that frightened me enough to where I canceled my pre-order. So I'm going to see when it does hit the market, how it's perceived and at that point I may pick up a Typhoon H but I canceled my pre-order I don't want to assume that amount of risk until I've seen how it performs when it hits the market first so that's that's there and then we've got um, in 2016 GoPro Karma is expected to come out GoPro has been very tight-lipped about the Karma we don't really know what to expect but if GoPro follows in their footsteps historically their first failure, in my opinion, was the GoPro Session. That was a very poorly perceived camera. 
and it was a step backwards technologically because it didn't even feature 4K. So if GoPro executes like they have historically pre-GoPro session, I feel that the GoPro Karma may become DJI Phantom's first real competitor because GoPro is a very customer-centric company. If you've ever dealt with their customer service for GoPro cameras in the past, you may have had an excellent customer service experience. I know that I did. I think it was my Phantom 3 or not my Phantom, but my GoPro 3 or my GoPro 3 Plus that uh, there was an issue and I called and they were able to, to straighten it out, which was phenomenal. So, yeah, I'm really excited about the GoPro Karma. And I know there's some other little drones popping up here and there. It seems to be the trend uh, throughout the uh, throughout the internet. So you're seeing all of these, all of these. Some of them fly by night startups, and some of them seem to be businesses with a legitimate business model and uh, product design. But you're starting to see a lot of drones pop up. Some that come to mind, the Air Dog. Have you ever heard of that? Did you ever try it out? You, know, you attached a GoPro to it. I never did. I mean, there's. There's tons of drones out there that, that aren't necessarily the... Uh, I'm just checking this right here to make sure I'm not running. Okay, I'm good. Disk space on this. This is just this is the iPod Touch that I use to fly with, but I also use it to record my audio. So, yeah, I mean, there's... It's going to be a very... It's 2016. I don't know if we're going to see the drastic leap forward with UAV technologies like we will in 2017. But I think a lot of uh, a lot of the smart money out there from a from a design perspective, a lot of the smart money is probably waiting to see which types of uh, regulations may come into place because you know drones throughout the world are a very controversial topic. I mean they're you know unfortunately there's there's fools out there that are flying these and they're and they're being irresponsible and and ultimately, the media, the media are all about uh, finding negativity. So it's it's those negative drone experiences that are likely going to be spread throughout the media. So you know it's one of those deals. If if people don't behave in a responsible fashion, you know this is a hobby that uh, that may become banned for all of us at a global scale. So I mean that's it's it's sad to think that's the case, but I mean this is. You know, these things are still in their infancy, and I've said over and over, drones, we're in the bag cell phone days. You know, when you had to when you had to carry around a bag with a phone in it, and then you got poor quality and super expensive cellular service, we're still in that time period with drones. I mean, the technology is not yet refined. You know, we're still early adopters, and, and like I tell everyone, if, if, you're, if you wish to become involved with this hobby, it's great. But consider yourself to be an early adopter just like someone in the early days of computers. I mean, I don't know if, if you ever did that. I built computers. I had to troubleshoot IRQ and DMA issues with cards. Uh, this was pre-plug and play, where you simply inserted a card into a computer and Windows detected it. So, I mean, it's, you know, this technology is just like that, or cell phones. It's not yet refined. But with it not being refined at this point in time, if you're the type of person like me, that enjoys troubleshooting challenges and you don't look at it as problems. If you look at it as a troubleshooting challenge instead of a problem, it can be a really fun and rewarding hobby because it's like, you know, every drone I pick up, when things break, I get excited because it enables me to, uh, to troubleshoot and, and see, you know, why it happened and, and then be better prepared the next time it occurs. Well, you know, I did if this, then that type thing. So that's, that's part of the thrill of it for me. But if you, if you don't enjoy those troubleshooting challenges, then you may um, you may find yourself to to be frustrated very quickly. So just a heads up. But yeah, this is uh, this is a show, epic drone show. I want to continue to to uh, feature new episodes. I haven't. Uh, that's interesting. The top of that feels like it's a button. Did I just discover something new? Push if you've got a Phantom Four. Push on the top of your controller between the uh, between the antennas, right below the DJI logo, and it feels like a tactile feel, like a button. I just now discovered that. Interesting. I don't know if that means anything, or I don't know. Tell me, tell me if you know what it is. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for more epic drone shows. Uh, this is a series I wish to continue, and uh, 
you know, want to do it as periodically as I can. I just, you know, sometimes I, I don't have the time to sit down with a drone and, and really nerd out like I did today. And it's, uh, when I do have that opportunity, I really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy my videos too. So uh, check out, again, check out epicdroneshow.com. You can find all my previous episodes. And you can find all the drones and the drone accessories that I've mentioned within this episode. Thanks for your viewership and be sure to subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash iRixGuy. Y'all have a good day. Hey all iRixGuy here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm an independent channel and it's viewers like you that help me to continue to grow. I appreciate your viewership and y'all have a good day.